Proverbial hot cakes. What's that, Johnny? Cheers, mate. Right, Johnny, thank you. I've got to tell this one, I'll ask for a can I see you now. <laughs> see you later. See you later. How much that left, Mick? <laughs> About a thousand left, I think, John. About a thousand? Yes. <laughs> And how many have you got rid of? We've just got rid of about six and a half, I think, at the moment. We're going very well. I've brought the ground record already, I think, so we're hoping for a, a bumper gate. Yes, it's going to be a record crowd packed in here at the compact little ground in Westfield Lane. And Frickley have spent two and a half thousand pounds this season alone on improvements. The team has responded magnificently, their spirit typified by an earlier cup win at Hales Owen. A goal down, they equalised there with that goal from Colin Bishop. And the next goal is a real beauty. This time, it's Gary Malander who supplies the cross, and watch out for Paul Wilson's header. A classic, and he deserved the celebrations that followed. Frickley finally wrapped up their victory with this penalty, dispatched comfortably by Russell Wilcox. Frickley, of course, have a secret weapon with the colliery just up the road. It's hardly surprising the lads are able to have their pre-match team talk huddled around a roaring coal fire. The visitors have no such luxury. I think we'll be looking forward to a little bit more than there. Especially if we don't put on a fire in bottom dressing room. <laughs> you do actually all get round this fire, don't you, before you go out onto the pitch? We don't usually want to Especially go out. Especially Mally Wright. Mally Wright does three tracks or something. If it's more sleep. <laughs> Let's be honest, lads, it's not a place anybody would want to come, is it, really, frickly on a Saturday afternoon to, to play against you? No, not, really. not if the wind's blowing down the pitch. Gale Force, which it will be. Yeah. Local Less people have made us favourites. You know, the local... As mates who all, all live around here don't think we can get beat, you know. They think it's just a matter of turning up, but I think it'll be a bit, bit harder on day. Yeah. But you're going to have quite good vocal backing, I think, aren't you? Oh, it'll tremendous yeah. I think it'll be even better. It's tough up here at the north, but you know, there are no fools at Frickley. As you know, Frickley Athletic are at home in the Cup today, and their opponents, well, they could be in for a tough time. And Frickley have got it made, because here in the dressing room, well, they've got a coal fire, as you can see, so they're going to go out all nice and warm, no matter what the conditions are like outside. But their opponents, Rotherham United, will probably go out of a freezing cold dressing room and they're going to find it a bit tough. Now, those are the lads who've got it all made. What do you reckon on Saturday? Do you think it's going to be a bit hard for Rotherham here? I think we'll be looking forward to a little bit more than there, especially yeah. if we don't put on a fire in bottom dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> you do actually all get round this fire, don't you, before you go out onto the pitch? We don't usually want especially to go out. Especially Mally Wright. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mother right, there's three tracks over on. If it's not asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest though, lads, it's not a place anybody would want to come, is it, really, frickly on a Saturday afternoon to, to play against you? No, not, no, no. Not if the wind's blowing down the pitch. Gale Force, which it will. Somebody, you were saying, it's always windy here, isn't it? Yeah, even on a, even on a bright summer's day, you know, there's still a breeze blowing down the pitch. And... It never goes away. So it's always <laughs> with us, like. That's it. Do you get a feeling about a cup run? I mean, you've played, Paul, at the highest level, of course, with Sheffield Wednesday. You played at, at Northampton. Now, you know what it's like to be in Rotherham shoes, don't you? Well, I didn't play that many FA Cup games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think this is the furthest I've been. But uh, I think we'll be looking for, forward to it a bit more than that, Rotherham. Well, that's one thing for sure that uh, Rotherham won't fancy that one, Jim. No, it's, it's how far is Frickley from Rotherham? It's 15 now. miles now, isn't it, we've established? It's interesting that their game's on and the two Sheffield teams, you know, who are 20 miles away and yeah. their games are off. Yeah, strange one, isn't it? Now, I was laughing at the coal fire there in the dressing room. I remember yeah. up in Scotland when we played, uh, there was a team called Still and Albion. Division uh, 3. You know, and Police they thought there might be trouble, but it never came. The ground was packed, and visiting fans were not disappointed. Rotherham soon saw the first opening. And it wasn't long before a mistake by a Frickley defender gave Rotherham their second. A few minutes into the second half, Frickley fell even further behind from a corner. Then, stung by the Rotherham cries of victory, Frickley decided to fight back in the last 10 minutes to make it 3-1 by way of consolation. Phil Roman, ITN Sport, West Yorkshire. But it was all...